Greetings! Welcome back to the Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel. One of the things that we like to do on this YouTube channel is a lot of crafting and building and things like that, right? This is about traditional living and homesteading, and that's not just the garden and the farm and preserving food, right? Obviously, those are huge, important things. But it's also all of the other stuff, right? It's building the chicken coop, building the fence, it's making things out of wood, it's tanning hides, it's knowing how to do some of your own basic blacksmithing, even if you don't go past tent stakes, right? It's all of those things. All of those things go together to make a traditional lifestyle. And it's the crafty side that we're going to be talking about in this video. When you start a craft, when you start woodworking, wood carving, forging, flint napping, I don't care what craft, right? When you start that stuff, it is typical to focus on deciding a genre of project you want to do, getting a pattern book, and making something out of the pattern book, right? And don't get me wrong, that is a good thing to do. It's a necessary first step, and I will never stop collecting pattern books, right? I have a few of them. Can you attest, beloved? Can confirm. Can confirm, right? I have a few of them. So, <laughs> that's good. But as you advance, as you move forward, you're going to spot things, right? You're, you're going to be walking through an antique shop and say, oh, I want to make that, right? You're going to see something that, that you can find one of them and say, I want to make a bunch of them, right? You're going to um, come up with ideas that you pull, pluck from the ether with your own brain cells. You want to make them and you have no reference material. And you're going to need to start drawing your own patterns, drawing your own plans in order to proceed with that. So we're going to kind of work on a series of videos that are dealing with this. And we're going to start with just a really simple carving pattern. And the idea for this comes from these two little duck heads. And these are really easy to find at antique shops, right? These pop up all the time. Because and you can see what happened with this one, this, this black duck head here. It's got chunks of cork still on it. Well, this used to be in a cork body decoy. The decoy fell apart because cork is soft and fragile. The head didn't because it's made out of wood and is a lot more durable. And, you know, this was probably rode around in somebody's tackle box or bottom of their gun cabinet or whatever for an extended period of time until somebody's family decided that somebody shouldn't have it cluttering up the, the office anymore and it ought to be, you know, out at a uh, yard sale or something. So these percolate into commerce like that. And I don't remember what I spent on either of these, but they were both low single-digit dollars, right? So this is, an, this is not expensive reference material. And it's wonderful reference material. When I collect these sorts of things for reference, I never buy the big expensive, like, things collectors argue over type material. I want to buy a lot of stuff for single-digit dollars, so I have a lot of reference material. That's much more useful to me than having one $10,000 decoy on a shelf collecting dust, right? That's just dumb. But this stuff is supremely useful if you want to start, start carving. But it has a problem. It's curved. Because it's curved, there is just no good way to take a flat ruler and start taking measurements from it and draw it. So we need a couple of tricks. I'm going to show them to you right here. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get a piece of cardboard with a cutout in it such that it can slide over and sit right over the center line of this duck head because this is the main profile that we need in order to make a good pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this here and I'm just going to go for a haphazard I really don't care about being accurate tracing. Okay, um, Let me center this a little bit better. This is just a guideline. This isn't important. And now the line is here. I'm going to cut about a half inch away from that line and just make an extra big cutout over this. Okay. All I need to accomplish is to have ample space around this duck head. Okay. And there we go. Now you can see the slides right over and frames the piece. That's exactly what we're going for. Now the next thing is I need a support system to hold this up. So I'm going to move this back a little bit, get 
these set up. Okay. Make sure I have enough space between them there for this to slide in. And I'm going to take a hot glue gun. Normally, I am not a big hot glue fan. I know a lot of people really love their hot glue. I'm not one of those people. I think things made with hot glue end up kind of cheap and tend to fall apart. But this is only a temporary fixture. Okay? So, eh. see, it already fell apart. It just needs to hold up. Just temporary. This only needs to stay put for a couple of minutes. Slide this down. This is sort of the fiddly stage. Okay. There we go with this one. that on there. Okay. So now, let me readjust this so you can see it better. We have a cardboard frame around our duck head and we can position it within there so that the edge of this cardboard goes right down the center line of that duck head. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to make some little pointers. These are just more strips cut out of this. We're going to take our hot glue gun and we're going to, anywhere there's a change in contour, attach one of these pointers so that it just exactly touches that center line. Okay. So there's one. These canvas back, they always have this sort of real almost pointy top of the head there. Come around here. Put one there. It's a bit long. Come around here. And we can put one there. Okay. And you can see why hot glue in this particular instance is just absolutely the perfect thing to quickly and efficiently attach these little pointers. Now, thanks to the fact that I had some corrupted files and already filmed this once, I have this all the way done. So, as we go through, we put a lot of these on, okay? And now if I line this up, you can see how this goes right over. And you have all of these pointers touching at all of the key locations. Okay? So that's for this view. And then we want one coming up through here because we want to map the shape of the head in this direction. Okay? So that's this. And that will go over just like that, okay? And map all of those locations across the fattest portion of the head. And we want this neck contour. So when I did this, I tilted my blocks at about a 30 degree angle just by propping up the bottoms. And this nicely maps out that neckline. Okay? And then the last thing we want to do is the beak. 
but because the beak is flat, this is easy enough to just do a tracing on, okay? So those four contours will define the shape of this duck head, okay? Now, at the same time, yes, we've defined the shape of our duck head, but we're a long ways off from having a usable pattern. So let me show you how we sketch this out and turn it into a nice two-dimensional image that can be physically cut out and traced onto a carving plank. So we need to draw this. Now I like to have a couple of layout lines on my drawing and I like to give my piece of paper a bit of a margin. So I'm just going to give this a one inch margin. Sometimes I use an inch, sometimes I use a half inch. Depends partly on my mood, depends partly on the size of the drawing that we're going to be doing. So, and that dimension is just going to help keep everything nice and square and easy to follow on the drawing. What that margin is really doesn't matter. Okay. So I do recommend that you give yourself a line to draw to, but don't overthink it. Okay. Now, we need to get our duck on here. So I want to line up, this is about an inch, it's, it's a ruler thickness, it's a little over an inch. And I want to line up the back of the head, so it's approximately there, so I have a similar margin bottom and side. So, I'm going to set this up just with, just kind of eyeballing it so that these are about there. Now when I did this, this point and this point were right at the bottom. So if I line those two up here on that line, it'll keep the head straight. Now to transfer all of these points to the piece of paper, I'm going to hold it firmly with my non-dominant hand and come in and make a little mark by pushing the point aside with the pencil lead and writing underneath that little point. If you don't do that, if you come out, right, if, if your point is here and you make your mark out there, mm -hmm. you're going to shrink your duck head. So you really want to stick the point in and chase it back, okay, so that you don't artificially shrink your piece. I'm going to put a little spot underneath each and every one of these little tips that I glued in. Make sure we don't shift it. Okay. And I'm sure by this point you can kind of see where we're going with this process. Which is the tip of the bill, coming around to the bottom of the bill. Okay. And if you have already surmised that we're eventually going to be playing a game of connect the dots, you are very, very astute. Okay. So I set that aside and I'm done with that. And here, it's this is very strange looking. But once I've transferred those points, this piece of paper, you can see how we're getting our, let me turn around the same direction, how we're getting our duck head out of it. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to connect all of those dots and we don't want to only freehand it. We want to have some control and we get that through these tools. These are called French curves. Okay. They should have a whole bunch of different curve shapes on them. You can also, you can also get circle stencils like these and you can get um, ellipse stencils, such as these. And all of these are useful. You see I have all of these and I use all of these. Um, an organic figure, like this duck head, you're not, these are not going to be as useful. They're a little too regular. Your organic form is going to be a, a little bit more irregular than that. But what we want to do is we want to look, and, and I usually think about connecting three dots at a time. This curve is continually changing radius. 
right? Always changing radius. So you're not going to find a region of any of these that exactly matches a large section of your duck head. But you can fairly easily find a lot of spots right there where I just connected three points, okay? Also bear in mind where it's convex. So this is convex all the way. This is slightly convex to here, but from here to the tip of the bill, it's concave. Mm -hmm. So I'll be using the convex surface underneath up to about here, and then from here down, I'll be using the concave surface, okay? And you have all sorts of different options here. So the next one, and do overlap, right? So you're going to find that these dots aren't perfect. Some are a little high, some are a little low. We want a fair line that averages them all out. So if I find a point, and I'll just do this, I can connect four of these dots right there, but you can see I have this ugly transition. So what I'll do is I'll just continue that up, and I want to come over top of this, right? So since this fits so perfectly through here, I'm going to assume that that point is wrong. And I'm going to connect this curve up to the point all the way at the top of the head there. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So since we have one, two, three, four that line up very nicely and one anomaly, I'm going to assume that this is the actual anomaly and that the rest of this is the correct curve. Mm -hmm. And Remember, it's a carving, it's not an airplane, right? So you don't have to be 100% perfect. So here I'm using the, using on the opposite side, convex, concave transition point, okay? Now we'll go under the bill, which is relatively straight, but still has a curve to it. And again, this one, this one, and that one line up very nicely. This one is just a little bit low, so I'm going to assume that that's the error. Kind of. Well, this one could be a little lower. That one could be a little high. I can't prove one by the other, so I'll split the difference in this case. Okay. Nice even curve. And then this point right there marks the tip of the bill. And I don't have anything that small, so I'm just going to freehand that little bit and we just keep going around. So this is a nice tight curve. And I've got four points lined up here. I want at least three, but four is awful nice if I can get it. And then even though this looks like a straight line, it is ever so slightly curved down. That's why we don't do the majority of the work freehanding, people, because we make errors like that. Okay, now we go around to the next batch. Same deal. And these three connect nicely with that section. And then this, kind of want to smooth in. Okay. Now, I'm just going to do a little bit of freehanding and accentuate the pointy forehead that these guys have. Just a little bit more than that came out. And we have our basic item. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to look at these two, right? We have through the head this way and through the neck that way. So middle of the neck is right about there. I'm just going to go up approximately this direction. I'm just going to draw a dotted line in there. Okay. And then the one through the head it just 
just touch the bottom of the jowls there. And I want to, this eraser is not the best. So I'm looking at this. I think that's a little bit pointier than what I had here. So I'm just going to kind of find a slightly sharper section of my curve and just bring that in a little. Again, we want to not make a nice pattern. We want it to actually represent what we're drawing, but at this scale, just the tilt of a pencil can make a fairly big difference. So use your judgment, right? If it doesn't look right, it's probably not right. And it's carving. Keep that in mind. It's carving. We're having fun. <laughs> you know? So don't obsess over little details that you can just fix later in the process of carving. Okay. So we have a reference on this line and we have a reference on this vertical line. This one I'm going to do first, and that's this taller section. Now, just like I gave myself a reference here, I want to come up and I'm just going to kind of eyeball a nice diff distance. Give myself a faint reference line there. Now we're going to repeat the process. By coming in, getting this approximately vertical. Then drawing underneath each of these points. Okay, so there's that outline, kind of a peanut shaped outline, and you can see that here, wide, narrow, wide, going right through there. And then, since I have this out, I will come over beside it. This one's a little harder to ballpark, because this and this are not even, that's the bottom. I didn't have a flat reference. So getting this one nice and straight and square is going to be a little trickier. Okay, so there's, that is this. And I traced and cut out the, the underbeak. So I'm just going to come in. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to trace that beak profile right there. Now, it's hard to get these perfectly symmetrical, so what I will often do when I'm doing stuff like this is trace it twice. Do it one way. Flip it over, and then trace it again, and you'll get the average of... See, the lines aren't perfect, but then if you cut all on the outside of both lines, you'll get the average of both sets of imperfections. And it will balance out a little bit, right? So there's our beak label that. And now we do the same thing here as we did down here. Find a section of one of these curves that looks like it'll work fairly well. This one looks like it's going to work really well for five points. That's always happy. Okay. 
And since this is supposed to be symmetrical, when I find a happy section, I try to match it on both sides. Okay. That one got a little big, came a little too far down. job here. Okay. And those didn't line up quite as nicely as I'd hoped. You can kind of freehand the gap. Okay. So now this profile occurs along that line. And get this one drawn in. Now when I go and take one of these and actually carve something out of it, what I usually do is I'll, I'll get some tracing paper and I'll put the tracing paper over top of it, trace it on just as is, right? And if I have something like this that I want to be symmetrical, Again, I'll trace it, I'll cut it out, and then I'll fold it in half. And then trace around the outside of the folded in half version. That does exactly the same thing as flipping this upside down. Right? It, it averages out the uh, imperfections. Okay? And this falls along that line. So now, while it's nigh on impossible to take something round like this, put a measure on it and actually get an accurate measurement that will tell you what to do. Once we've done this, it's very easy to put this on and get a very accurate measurement on these different parts mm -hmm. to decide how to cut it out, how to cut out a carving blank, and how to proceed with the carving. Right? And then we want to um, put some notes, right? Um, Hammondsport, New York, antique shop, canvas back head, right? Something like that so you know where it came from, right? So always label your stuff. I'm not going to do that on camera, but I will have this labeled with something along those lines before too awful long. When, when I do find these things, I do like to sketch at least what county and state that I got them in. Antique shop stuff, people who run antique shops, they travel, they hunt, they go to flea markets all over the place. So it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that because you bought it in a certain county, it came from that county, but I like to always note that, right? Like a town or a county. And I do a fair amount of, of driving around and I'm always pulling over to antique shops to find things like this for project ideas, examples, reference material, stuff like that. So I have. I, I, you know, over the 20 years that I've been collecting things, little things like this, you know, I have stuff from, you know, North Carolina to Illinois to New England, right? It's, it's all over the place. So I try to at least keep a rough record of, of where I found these different things because that can be useful. So I hope this helps. I hope that you get some ideas from this to use in your own projects. If you've enjoyed this, I would be most grateful if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoyed it and show it out to other folks. And I hope that you will try this at home. Do some things like this. Try to make some of your own patterns and plans. And I will see you next time here at Old Ways Rising Farm.